All praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord of all the worlds. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and from the evil of our deeds. Whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can lead him astray. And whoever leads astray, there's no one that can guide him. Basically, for this five minutes here, I want to talk about an uh, important topic. I have here a research that I've compiled about making up the intentionally missed prayers. And this is between Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. I took his view and I took the position of a Sheikh al-Amir of Sun'ani. So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most beneficial, the most merciful. Allah has prescribed and decreed that the five daily prayers are performed during their fixed times. The scholars all agree that if a person has a legislated reason for missing the prayer, then he can make it up. Included in those reasons are forgetfulness and sleeping. Now, what about a prayer that one intentionally missed? That he just sat there, he heard the event, and he didn't respond. Work is not a valid reason, unless you're, on, you're a surgeon and you're performing an open heart surgery, then that's something different. Or a mother delivering a baby, of course, that's different as well. At any rate, can it be made up and should it be? This is an issue that some of the scholars differ over. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah held the position that the prayer missed purposefully shouldn't be performed and that it isn't legislated to be made up. Moreover, if a person offered it, then it would be considered an incorrect action. Instead, in this instance, the person should make voluntary prayers to compensate for the loss of the obligatory prayers. <coughs> Other scholars held the same view as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. And those were Dawood ibn Ali al-Zahiri, Ahmed ibn Yahya al-Baghdadi, who was a companion of Imam al-Shafi'i. Now the four Imams of jurisprudence who are Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, and Imam Ahmed, all said it was a must to make a, make a, a prayer that is missed deliberately. They said it's a must to make it up. Ibn Taymiyyah and those who rejected the offering of an intentional missed prayer have concluded their arguments on the fact that there isn't any concrete evidence for doing so. And the scholars base their conclusion off of qiyas, based off of an original analogy, deduction. The qiyas in this issue is found in the obligation to refast for the person who intentionally broke his fast during Ramadan by having sex. Ibn Taymiyyah considered the report about refasting as a defective narration that was collected by Imam Ibn Malik in his Muwatta and Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim avoided it in their authentic collections. For example, a Bedouin came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam beating his breast and tearing his hair and saying, I am destroyed. The Messenger of Allah, may Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him, said, why is that? And he said, I had intercourse with my wife while fasting in Ramadan. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, asked him, are you able to free a slave? The man said, no. Then he asked him, are you able to give away a camel? The man replied, no. He said, sit down. And someone brought a long basket of dates to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and he said to the man, take this and give it away as sadaqah. The man said, there is no one needier than me. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, eat them and fast one day for the day when you had intercourse. This, this word right here, eat them and fast for the one day when you had intercourse, the scholars have said the wording here is defective. Reason being, this wording was reported by a narrator on Imam al-Zuhri, and he went against those who were more reliable than him. See, we see we have scholars who reject hadith when a narrator narrates on a person independently or solitarily. However, we have other narrators, even maybe in number, maybe we have three, who narrated on another narrator, and we would take that. Nonetheless, they went against him. So, Imam al Putni viewed the wording to refast as being weak by saying the narrator contradicted those who were more reliable than him in accuracy and in number. Not to mention that the number he opposed totaled 40 narrators, and not one of them ever mentioned in this hadith eat them and fast one day for the day when you had intercourse. The second argument in defense of those who allow the intentional missed prayer to be done using the fact that a person who forgets to pray must offer it. So therefore, it's all the more right that a person who neglects the prayer deliberately make it up. Ibn Hazm and Ibn Taymiyyah both concluded that this is a weak analogy as well. The hadith that orders the missed prayer to be done is where the Prophet ﷺ said, he who forgets the prayer or he slept 
And its expiation is only that he should observe it when he remembers it. This is where the topic gets interesting. As Amir Sanani refuted the scholars who rejected this was a sound analogy. He broke his argument down into several points for the possibility to offer the missed prayer. And for each point, he added a piece of evidence. Point number one, the hadith offers that one who overslept the prayer's timing or forgot to make it up, make it, therefore the person without an excuse must make it up as well as the command for those two type of people and the obligation can be understood by the fact that it is addressing those with the most common of circumstances to miss the prayer meaning sleep or forgetfulness, which must include those who intentionally missed it as well. His second point of argument is its expiation is only that he should observe it when he remembers it, as the prophet said about those who overslept or forget. The wording expiation in most cases is used for those who have done something sinful. And oversleeping is, oversleeping a prayer and forgetting it isn't sinful. Hence the one who didn't pray intentionally must pray as offering is only an expiation, okay? The third point, Abu Qatada said, they told the Prophet Sallallahu that they had no, that they had slept and missed the prayer. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is no negligence when one sleeps. Regular negligence is his one awake. If any one of you forgets the prayer or sleeps and misses it, let him pray it when he remembers it. Let him pray. This wording is general and includes those who slept or neglected the prayer as mentioned in the hadith. The fourth point, the missed prayer is a debt. It's a dain, it's, it's a debt between Allah and the servant. A debt is only settled when it is paid and delaying his payment beyond his fixed time is a sin. However, it is still has to be paid sooner or later. That's a good point. Point number five, a man said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, my father has died and he did not perform hajj. Shall I perform hajj on his behalf? He saw Salim said, do you think that if your father owed a debt, you would pay it off? The man said, yes. He said, the debt owed to Allah is more deserving of being paid off. The Prophet Salim highlighted that a debt owed to Allah is more deserving to be paid off. And this applies to hajj and fasting. So if a person died without completing these two obligations and had the ability to do so, then the one entrusted with his affairs would have to perform them on his behalf meaning what power of attorney, spouse, children, and so forth. Amir al-Sinani mentioned here that a person might ask, how can you consider the prayer a debt between the servant and of Allah? The reply is, it is known that a person who acknowledges Tawheed must recognize Muhammad Sallallahu as the Prophet, along with the other four pillars of the religion. The pillars of Islam are a right of Allah that must be fulfilled either in their time appointed or otherwise. The sixth point and last point is there is a consensus that whoever leaves off Dhuhr until Asr comes in or Maghrib until Isha come in must make those prayers up at a later time. So if he prays Dhuhr or Maghrib before Fajr, the next day then the obligation is lifted from him. Not praying the prayers in their legislated fixed times is a major sin. Those are all the arguments that Amir Sinani used to defend his position that the prayers intentionally missed must be done. Ibn al-Taymiyyah and Ibn al-Hazm, both in this issue rejected Piyas. Their final conclusion to the issue is the, prayer, the missed prayers aren't offered, but the only way to compensate for the lost prayers is by offering sunnah. And this is supported in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Allah says in the hadith Qudsi, the first of his actions which a servant will be held accountable for on the day of resurrection will be his prayers. Excuse me, this is a hadith on the Prophet Um The first actions for which a servant of Allah will be held accountable for on the day of resurrection will be his prayers. If they are in order, then he will, be, then he will have prospered and succeeded. If they are wanton, then he will have failed and lost. If there is something defective in his obligatory prayers, the Lord, the Most High, will say, see if my servant has any super obligatory, super obligatory prayers, which will be completed, that which was defective in his obligatory prayers. Then the rest of his actions will be judged in a like fashion. This hadith infers that the misobligatory prayers aren't made up, but are reimbursed by sunnah. Allah accepts the sunnah prayers done correctly in place for the missed farth prayers, as the hadith clearly states, 
Overall, the position of Ibn Taymiyyah is possibly the most favorable one based on the evidence, whereas the other views are based on analogy. And Allah knows best. Prepared and compiled by Abu Ali Abdullah bin Dwight Battle in Doha, Qatar, 1439. Wa subhanaka wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ilaha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.